Stay hydrated, friends. What's up, guys? It's KY, not Kai the Creative. And if you're somebody that is starting your creative career today, you're gonna have to do something, you're gonna have to bite the bullet, and you're going to have to start doing work for free. Now, starting work for free or creating beta clients is a really good way to set up your portfolio so you have a proof of concept and what value you're gonna bring back to clients so when you eventually get paid, they know what they're paying into. Now, there are a couple things that I learned from shooting for free, shooting portfolio work that I wanna pass on to you guys so you guys make the right decisions, build yourself up in your creative career. The first thing about creating spec work or beta client work or whatever you wanna call it is that never stop doing it. Now, what ends up happening is that instead of kind of going cold turkey on doing spec projects, personal projects, or having beta clients, it just decreases. So when you're starting out, you're going to do a lot of these spec projects or this personal work, or a lot of work where you're either gonna be fronting the budget, not getting paid a lot, or you're doing it for free to build up your portfolio. That's a practice that should never stop. It's kind of like being an NFL player. You're going to have to practice from Monday to Friday Anyways, even though you're a professional football player, we know that you know how to play football, but if you're not practicing your reps, practicing your plays, when it comes to game day, you're going to make mistakes that are gonna be crucial and you're gonna end up losing games and not having that contract anymore. And the same thing kind of functions with creativity and creative entrepreneurship. If you're not still working for yourself, you're not still doing spec projects or practice projects where you might not be the person that is benefiting financially entirely, then you're going to start losing in games and situations where you are going to get paid. So understanding that it's not necessarily a process that you start and you stop, it's, just, it's this process you do a lot in the beginning and you taper off as you get more paying clients and as you get more work. Now, when you're working with beta clients or you're doing spec projects, you wanna make sure that you are exchanging a service for something back. You wanna make sure that you're getting something for yourself, whether that is practice or whether that's some sort of experience with a piece of equipment that you haven't used before or maybe it's important industry knowledge that you need to tailor your service offering to offer to other clients you need to get something back in the form of information it might not be payment that you get necessarily but the things that you might get back might be worth more than the money that you would have charged for that project in the first place for myself if i am taking on beta clients or clients i want to test different product offerings to i will ask for important industry insights that i need so i can start to tailor that product to have better client interactions and have a more profitable end product for myself and my business and the same thing with yourself if you're doing something for client work you want to make sure that you're able to make those adjustments and the only way you can get that information is by actually getting that information directly from the person that you're working with. So making sure that you're getting something back if it's not monetary when you're doing spec work projects or anything like that is super essential to make sure you're doing things for the right reasons. Another thing that you wanna consider when you're working for free is still invoice your clients. Just make the price of that invoice zero. The reason why you wanna do that is you don't wanna set a precedent for people when you're doing spec work and personal projects portfolio work that it's always going to be free. It's okay to let people know how much a particular service is going to cost, how much you are thinking of pricing that project and doing it afterwards and making sure that they're aware of that. That way, if you do a spec project in 2018, somebody doesn't come back to you in 2021 expecting it to be free. They have a full understanding of what you were going to charge that particular project. And when they ask you to do it on their time instead of your own, then they know that the expectation is that you're going to be paid the amount that was on the invoice is just not going to be zero dollars anymore. I found a problem with this is when I was doing personal projects or I was doing spec stuff and portfolio work, when I first started, people came back a year or so later thinking that they were entitled to free work and I had to explain to them that wasn't the case and there was a little bit of tension there but when I had to explain that that was for me to build up a product that I could sell to other people and I was beta testing with to see what things they liked and didn't like, it was easier to understand but to be honest, I haven't seen one of those clients since. Another thing you wanna do and something that I did not do a very good job of when I was starting out is getting more behind the scenes. Maybe you can get a friend to get their camera or their cell phone to get some behind the scenes things, or maybe you could just set up a GoPro or something like that, or even your phone somewhere in the background and getting behind the scenes content. What that does is when you start to promote that product or start to promote your business, or even just start to promote your art, you're able to show people the process. I find that people see finished products all the time. When you're on YouTube or Instagram, we always see the finished product of a particular piece of creative work. But we don't see what actually goes into it. We don't see how you plan the shots. We don't see how you shot the shots. We don't see what you use or what it's like being on set with you. And if I'm somebody that wants to invest in either consuming your content or paying for the content for you to make for myself, I wanna know what every aspect of that looks like and not just what it looks like at the end. So being able to get behind the scenes content is a really good way to show what the experience is like with working with you. And the last thing is you could probably say no. I mean, if someone's gonna hit you up on Instagram and start offering to do a collaboration or anything like that, or they're basically trying to convince you to do a job for free, if it's something that isn't going to benefit you from a way of helping out a cause 
or giving you experience or giving you knowledge that you can go and progress in your business, you don't have to do it. I know it feels a little bit weird saying no to people, especially when you're starting out and you think every opportunity is a good opportunity. I will say that no two opportunities are always the same thing. You have to do an evaluation of what it's going to give you or what you're going to give back to a community. If it's something that only benefits one person and that's the end user, but you have to take on all of the risk, all of the stress of planning and shooting and editing and all of those things, do an evaluation of whether or not this might be the thing for you. Now, something that you're interested in and you want to start practicing on, you want to pursue, by all means, go for that. But you also have to understand that you have the autonomy as a creator to say no to projects if it doesn't serve you. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. That being said, this is a quick video just talking about the things that I learned when I was starting out freelancing, when I was doing spec work and projects for my portfolio that I can kind of go around later and start to promote those services. If you like this video, make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. Do not drink that much water that I did in the beginning of this video because it really hurts and I'm trying to hold it together while making this video. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, I don't have a closeout, but we'll see you later. <sighs> that feels awful. I'm gonna go puke.